Good morning and welcome to Casino Baptist Church. My name is Pastor Stephen Gort and I want to thank you for joining with me today. Today's a great day to celebrate. Today we celebrate our mothers. So mothers, grandmothers, have a happy Mother's Day. And it's great that you can join with me today. And today we are going to look at a Mother's Day message. So we're going to step outside the book of Hebrews today and we'll get back there next week. But today we're going to look at a story that you probably know really well. You're probably through Sunday school or at church or in your own Bible reading. And the story comes from 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 16 through to 28. And it's the story about King Solomon and two women who come before him trying to work out who owns the baby. You know the story? I'm sure you do. And I'm sure you're already starting to work out. Yes, yes, Stephen, I know the story. I know the ending. I know it. Well, that's good because we are going to get to that in a little while. So if you do know the ending and you know the story and what it's about, hold that in your minds. Because I'll ask you some questions about that in a little while. Also, at the end of today's message, which might be a little bit longer, we will be doing communion. So if you have some elements at home, you might want to grab some bread or crackers or some juice and we'll celebrate communion together. Because in the story today, what we're going to be reminded of, we are also reminded of at the Last Supper. When Jesus uh, explained what it all meant about his death and about how and tomorrow what the broken bread represented and what the wine represented, that also is seen in that Old Testament story. The story of forgiveness, the story of compassion, the story of sacrifice. Well, that story, it's in Jesus, and we'll touch on that at the end of today's message, but it's also in 1 Kings chapter 3. So if you've got your Bibles, you might like to open and turn there with me. And as we do so, let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that we can come together. We thank you that we can learn from your word. Lord, it is true. It is faithful. And we ask today that we, as we open it, you'll open our hearts and minds to learn from it. So we thank you for this in your name. Amen. Well, as I said, earlier, it is Mother's Day and it's great that we can be here together. And as I was uh, reflecting on Mother's Day during the week, I read a few stories and let me share some of them with you. Uh, this one supposedly came from Napoleon. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. And maybe as a mother today, you feel like that. You feel like you are on top of the world. Another story, the joy of motherhood is what a woman experiences when all the children finally go to bed. And maybe that's how you feel today. Maybe being a mother today is just a little stressful for you. Or another story. Now this one revolves around some army training. A sergeant who had been training new recruits couldn't get one of them to make his bed correctly. He couldn't and get up on time, he wouldn't eat the food, he just complained, 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 wouldn't do what he was told at all. But then one day, he turned it all around. And so the colonel, overseeing everything, asked the sergeant and said, how did you get that new recruit to do that? And the sergeant said, look, I put him on, uh, I punished him, we did all these other things, didn't work. So then I went and did the most important thing that I could do, the ultimate weapon. I had to resort to it. I called his mother. Maybe today you might be sitting there this morning as a mother thinking, well, you feel a bit like your judge, jury and executioner sometimes with your children. I mean, today is Mother's Day and we might have a bit of a laugh at some of those stories. And it's a day to celebrate. But I also want to recognise that today can be hard for some people. And for some people, it may mean that even for those of you watching this YouTube clip, you can't actually do it on Sunday. You've got to do it another day because just the thought of Mother's Day and going to church or watching this on Mother's Day is just too difficult. 
And we need to acknowledge that today. Now, maybe you want to be a mother, but you can't for some reason. Perhaps you have not had the best mother in the world. Perhaps you've had a mother who's died, or you've had a child and they have died. Or maybe even this morning, you're someone whose children have gone away from God. You've given them the best upbringing and introduction to Jesus and God that you can, but they're not walking that closely anymore. Maybe today, some of you are flying solo as you try to bring up your children. So I want to recognize today that it can be a day of great joy, and we can celebrate that. But it could also be a day for many people of great sorrow. But the great thing is we have a God who is big enough to handle all of that. So today, I want to include all of you. I'm glad that you can watch this. And also, yes, I'm going to direct some of today directly to women, being Mother's Day. But this is a message for all of us, men, women, old, young. I think in this passage, we're going to see something that all of us can learn from today. So as I said, outside of the book of Hebrews today, 1 Kings chapter 3, 16 to 28, a story, as I introduced before, that I think you'll all know really, really well. Now, I asked the question, how, what's the answer? Where does the story, what's the end of the story? Because I think many of you would say, yes, yes, Stephen, I know the end of the story. Great. I want us to think today, why is that story actually in the Bible? Is it there to show the strange situations that King Solomon found himself in? Probably not. Is it a story that's there to remind us that you can use swords to settle disputes? Well, nice answer, but probably not. Is it there to show that prostitution was alive in that society and it's alive in ours? Well, I don't think that's the main meaning of the story yet. So why is this story here in 1 Kings chapter 3? Now, for all of you that said, yes, yes, Stephen, I know the end of the story. Great. What is it? Well, what the meaning of the story is actually at the end of the story. In verse 28, we read this. When all Israel heard the verdict the king had given, so I want you to think, this answer we're about to get to, is it your answer? They held the king in awe because they saw that he had wisdom from God to administer justice. Remember, King Solomon had prayed for wisdom. And here it shows that he exercised that wisdom. And the main part of the story is, is that wisdom and justice doesn't depend on Solomon. It comes from God. That's the part of the story. Remember at the end of verse 28? Because they saw that he had wisdom from God to administer justice. This is about God's wisdom, God's justice, and that God dispenses it. So we know the story, and you might be thinking, hang on a minute, Stephen said that this story might be a little bit longer, this message. Well, where do we go now? Isn't that the end of the story? And if that's all we take from it, that's a good thing to take. But I think there are some more details here, some finer details that we can sometimes miss. And I think there are three. The first that I want us to look at is that there are no perfect mothers. And you might be thinking, oh, Stephen, on Mother's Day, saying there are no perfect mothers, that's a bit rich. Well, let's look at it. Now, two prostitutes came to the king, verse 16, and stood before him. Now, the two mothers in the story are prostitutes. They've had children, and they're obvious that the children have been conceived in sin. So these ladies, they're sinners, and when you read the Old Testament and into the New Testament as well, these are people that God would say you don't have anything to do with. So why? Why did King Solomon agree to hear their case? Why did he agree to listen to them? Because as far as Jewish law went, he didn't have to. As far as Jewish law went, the punishment that they deserved, they were already going to be judged, the punishment was severe for both them and the children. It should have just been dealt with. But have you ever wondered why King Solomon didn't follow that? 
why he stepped outside of the law and why he showed grace and mercy in dealing with their case. Well, remember the end of the story? King Solomon showed God's wisdom and justice. And that's why I think he did listen to their case. Because what he is showing them here, why is he listening to the women? Why is he showing them grace? Why is he showing them mercy? Why is he showing that he cares about women and children? Because God cares. And because God cares and God's wisdom and God's justice, King Solomon steps outside of the Jewish law to hear the case of these two women about their children. Now, these women weren't living up to God's ideals. That's for sure. They were breaking uh, his law. But he still cared about them. He still loved them. And he still wanted them to make the right choices to follow his ways. Now, I want us to think just briefly about that. If any of us had to wait for God to love us based on our performance, do you know what? We'd still be waiting. I know why we'd still be waiting. But we don't have to. These ladies didn't have to wait for God to love them by their performance. They were sinners. They were far from God. They didn't really even know God. But God cares. God loves them. God wants them to hear about him. So today, I want you to think, you know, no matter how you feel today, I want you to think, no matter what you've done today, God cares about you. And there are no such things as perfect mothers. There's also, just in case the men are thinking, yeah, there's no such thing as perfect men either. No such thing uh, as perfect young people or perfect old people. We're not perfect. It's, it's a bit like the story of a little girl what, what, watching her mother wash the dishes at night. And she saw that just in a few of her hairs here at the front, that she had some white hairs with the rest of her hair being a brunette. And the little girl said, Mom, why do you have those white hairs there? And the mum sort of kept washing and said, Well, dear, every time you do something that makes me sad or cry, I get one of these little white hairs. And the little girl thought about them, really screwed her face up as she thought about it, and said, Well, Mom, why does your mum have a head all of white hair? It's a good question. Out of the mouths of babes. And the thing is, there are no one perfect. There are no perfect mothers. There are no perfect fathers. No perfect men. No perfect women. No such thing. Now, I don't say that today to drag you down. You might be thinking, Stephen, I'm already feeling not so good today and I'm upset or whatever it might be about different things. And now you're telling me I'm not perfect. I really want you to build me up, but I, you're telling me I'm not perfect. I don't think that's a good message. Well, I think that is the biblical message. The biblical message is there is no one perfect, but that's not to drag you down. That's actually to lift you up. So I want you to think about that for a moment. We don't have to be like, like these women who are prostitutes. They didn't have to reach a certain bar level, a certain height, so God said, yep, now I love you. In their sin, God still cared about them, still wanted to show them grace and mercy, and Solomon showed that by listening to their story. Okay, That didn't have to happen, but he did it because he was showing God's wisdom and God's justice to them. We don't have to think today that we need to reach a certain level before we can serve God, that God will love us. We don't have to reach a certain level before we can serve our family or our church. We don't have to think we don't measure up, so therefore we cannot do anything. Now, don't think that today. This story tells us that God can use us. We can be freed we, to serve him and to serve each other in our imperfection. So don't hear me when I say today that there are no perfect mothers. Don't take that as a negative, but take it as an opportunity that you can be freed to actually serve God, serve your family, and serve the church. Now in Jewish law, as I hinted at before, these ladies and the child should have been dealt with harshly. They would have been probably put to death. But instead, 
King Solomon shows them compassion. He shows them forgiveness. He treats them as valuable people. I mean, they are valuable people, but the Jewish law would say they're sinners. Deal with them harshly. But King Solomon says, no, yes, they're sinners, but they still deserve grace. They still deserve mercy. They still forgive, still deserve forgiveness. They're valuable. And because no one is perfect, that means today we shouldn't look down on others. It means today we shouldn't treat others poorly because all of us are valuable in God's sight. All of us need God's love. All of us need forgiveness. All of us need God's compassion. And all of us should be sharing that with others. So, men, can I encourage you today to think about that? Do you show love? Do you show compassion? Do you show forgiveness in your homes? Do you show it at church? Yeah, our children are looking to their parents. They're looking to their role models to show them how they should live in society. So mothers and fathers today, men and women, what do the children see in you? That's the first finer detail, I think, in this story. There are no perfect mothers. The second is that you are not alone. Now, this one might be a little bit harder to see. And I think the more you look into this story, I think the more questions that it raises. So one question that I'm uh, immediately jumps to my mind is that these women being prostitutes, having children out of wedlock, how do you think they were feeling when they were summoned before the king? I think they were probably thinking, yes, I know the Jewish law. I'm about to die. I'm about to die. My child is about to die. But here, King Solomon, as I said, steps outside of the law, shows God's wisdom, shows God's justice, and saves the child. Now, even though it doesn't spell it out, I think he probably saves the women as well. See, God knows what was going on in this situation. And he knew the best way to act for everyone concerned. They were never alone, these women, because God was with them. And Solomon was not alone. God was with him and granted him wisdom to see exactly how the situation needed to be dealt with. All in this, for both sides of the parties, God was with them. Now, there might be times, even today, that you're feeling that in being a mother, the world is just getting on top of you, that there's no way out. And maybe today you're thinking, yes, I have a husband. Uh, I've got a family. I, I've got a church I go to. I've got a job. You might be thinking, I've got all those things. But even with all those things, sometimes you can feel I'm just fighting it all alone. I'm doing it all myself. Well, if you feel like that today, this story says don't, because God is with you. If you love and follow Jesus, you are never alone. The New Testament tells us that the Holy Spirit comes on us and is with us always. So you can know that God is with you. You can know that God knows what is best for you. You can know that whatever you face, the New Testament says God never gives us anything to face that we cannot face in his strength. So today, have some strength, have some confidence. You are not alone. You don't have to face life's issues alone. And if you have no husband, if you, uh, for whatever reason, you don't have family or you feel that you don't have a support around you, God is still there. And I think you'll realise, as you realise that God is there, that there are people to support you around you. And if you feel that maybe there isn't, then talk to someone about getting a little bit more support today because you are not alone. Never feel you're alone. See, God never promises that life is going to be easy. Now, it'd be great if he did. You know, follow me, life is easy. I think scripture's actually the other way. You know, follow God and life is going to probably be a bit trickier. Not guaranteed, but could be. I want you to realise that you are not alone that God loves you and he promises that he will be with you no matter what you're facing. So whatever you're facing today, he's right there with you. Now, 
God may not save your child. God may not change your husband. God may not remove whatever pain you're facing today. But he does know what is best. He has a plan for you. And he will be there with you every step of the way. That is something we can rejoice in. Last week when we looked at Hebrews, we looked at God could never lie, that God always kept his promises. Isn't it awesome to know that we're never alone? That's a promise that God keeps. I wonder at times when we think of the stress levels that we have, both for men and for women, when we feel that we're taking on the world by ourselves, when even within our great support networks of family and church and everything, when we feel like we're just doing it ourselves and that we're alone, I wonder how often we do that when we've actually forgotten God. That we've actually forgotten that God is with us every step of the way. When we actually try to do it physically ourselves. So today, if you think I do feel alone, for whatever reason, is it because we have made that choice and forgotten about God? There's another part of the story that I just want to touch on as we close. The last finer detail I want us to look at is that there is nothing like a mother's love. Now, the real mother in this story would, was willing to give up her child to the other lady so that the child could live. That sacrifice. That is love. And there is nothing like a mother's love. And when you think of motherhood today, you realise that motherhood actually entails a whole lot of sacrifice. Whether it's sacrificing your time, your money, your health, your sleep, your sanity. You sacrifice a lot as a mother and a father for your children. Now, God gave us the greatest example of all, didn't he? And this is what we're going to remember in a few moments' time, communion that his own son, when we were still enemies, remember that these ladies who were prostitutes, they weren't living God's way. But God, through King Solomon, showed compassion, showed grace, showed mercy, showed wisdom and justice. They didn't deserve it, but God showed it. The greater example of Jesus dying on the cross when we were still his enemies, we had turned our back on God, on Jesus. We didn't want anything to do with them. But he died so we could be forgiven, so we could be shown grace, so we could be shown mercy. God's wisdom and justice fell on his son so we could be free. Jesus was that sacrifice. When you look at this story, we realise that um, there's nothing greater than a mother's love. And it revolves around sacrifice. So I want to ask you today, no matter how you feel, as a mother or a father, are you still willing to show that sacrifice for your children? Are you still willing to show that love, the love that Jesus showed you by going to the cross? Are you willing to show that love today to your children? When you think in the wider group of a church you might go to or within your community. Remember earlier I said that our children look to adults and particularly parental figures as their role models. What are the children in our churches and our community, the greater community? What do they see in us? Do they see the same love that Jesus showed us? Do we show that then to them? Now, sometimes I think as we close today that we can think motherhood or being a father is just too difficult. Well, what this passage really shows us, and it's what I called this passage, what I gave the title to this sermon, is that real mums stand out. Will you be a real mum this Mother's Day in 2021? Will you be a real mum that stands out for your children? For the children in your church and for the children in your community? Dads, will you support them in that? Will you realise that you too are not perfect? None of us are perfect. That we too are not alone because God walks with us every single day. And that we need to love our children and to show them 
maybe even more so than the mothers do. Today, real mums need to stand out. Will you stand out? Today, real dads need to stand out. Will you stand out? Will you stand out and stand up? Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this message from 1 Kings. Lord, we realise that it's a story we know well. And we just love that the way you gave wisdom and justice to Solomon so that he could show it to these ladies and to the child. Lord, I ask that we too will show that same grace, that same mercy, that same compassion to our children. And Lord, to the children in our church and to the children in our communities. Father, help us today to realise we are not perfect and that's not a downer, but that can free us up to live for you. And Lord, if there is someone watching today that doesn't know you yet, because they're feeling they have to achieve something so that you will love them. Lord, through your spirit, open their eyes today to know that you love them right where they are right now. It doesn't matter what they've done. You are willing to love them. They just need to turn and follow you. So Lord, I pray that someone will make that choice today. Father, thank you that you are God that walks with us every single day no matter what we face and we rejoice in that in your name today amen next week we will jump out of uh, first kings and back into our series looking at the book of hebrews and i think we're going to probably uh, be looking at hebrews chapter 6 through to chapter 9 so you might look to, like to look ahead at that looking at Jesus being the high priest and a few other things. So I'd encourage you to read ahead. As I said earlier, we are going to celebrate communion together. And so hopefully you've been able to uh, grab some bread or to grab some grape juice. As we come to think about this, just think about what we shared there in 1 Kings about sacrifice. As mothers and fathers, as aunties, as uncles, as grandparents, we often sacrifice for our children, our grandchildren, our nieces and nephews. We often do that. Maybe we do it without even realising. But the greatest example that we're following is what Jesus did. And I want us to think as we come around this great table to remember all that he has done for us, to realise that sacrifice for us. When we didn't deserve it, when we were his enemies, he gave his life. The Old Testament said that a, a blood sacrifice was required. And as we've looked at in the book of Hebrews, it needed to be the perfect man, needed to be God, it needed to be the high priest from a certain family. And Jesus was all of that. The perfect sacrifice, once for all. For anyone who says they want to love and follow him, he, he takes the punishment, the justice that we deserve on himself. So God offers us grace and God offers us mercy because of what Jesus did. This morning, I'm just going to read a few verses. It's going to come from Luke's gospel as Luke records the Last Supper. And it's interesting when you read chapter 22 of Luke that he goes into the Last Supper in more depth than a lot of the others do. But just reading a few verses today. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This morning, this cracker represents Jesus' body. And on that cross, that body was broken. So if you have a cracker or a piece of bread, you might like to take and let us eat together. As we remember that broken body, that sacrifice, so we, no matter what we've done, can be a part of God's family again. Let us eat together. Luke then records 
what happened next. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. What Jesus is saying there is that he is reinterpreting the Passover for them. And the cups that represented different things, this was one of the cups of grace and mercy. He takes it, he holds it, and he reminds them that the following day, his blood will be shared. So that grace and mercy can flow to them. A new covenant, in a sense, began that day with his death, and then three days later, with his resurrection, when he defeated sin, defeated death. If you love the Lord Jesus today, let us drink together. As we remember that we are washed whiter than snow, our sins are not held against us because of this blood that Jesus shed. Let us remember this symbol and all that he has done as we drink together. Let us drink. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that we can stand before you in heaven, knowing we're not there because of our own merit, because we would be cast away. We can only stand there because of your Son. Lord, as we celebrate this today, we remember just that love shown. And it cannot help but remind us of the love shown by our mothers, our fathers. But Lord, it's a love too that you want us to then take and show with others. So Lord, help us to do that to our children today. Help us to do it to those in our community around us. Lord, we want to be the people you want us to be. And we ask for guidance and wisdom and justice, just as Solomon prayed. Lord, grant us your wisdom and knowledge so we can live and make decisions the way you want us to. And we ask for that this week in your name. Amen. Well, thank you very much for joining with me today. And I'll be looking forward to joining up with you again, hopefully this coming Wednesday, Facebook Live. Just go to Casino Baptist Church Facebook page and you'll see the live link there. So you can join us at 6.30. But also next Sunday, be with us again, 10 o'clock, as we dive back in to the great book in the New Testament, the book of Hebrews. So please read ahead and I'll look forward to catching up with you then. See you then.